Hey everyone, this is an 85 millimeter 2S Whoop that I built using Sharkbite Digital FPV. So it's my first time putting Sharkbite into a Whoop, but everything else about this build is very familiar to me. And I know a number of you will recognize it as well. This is the build formula that I nicknamed the Shutterbug 85 more than two years ago when I built my first drone like this. And I have to say, after all this time, it's still one of my all time favorite build recipes. Uh, they're so much fun. They're fast enough to have a lot of fun in a relatively small space, and they're tough enough to really take the punishment so you can take chances, see a gap, fly full speed, and just not really worry about it. Um, and I've had a lot of fun with these. They're also really fun for racing. Uh, before COVID, our local multi-GP chapter had really competitive 2S Whoop races, both indoors and outdoors. And the reason that's so cool is that when we have five inch drone races, we have to go way out into a big field. It's really hard for other people to see. It's hard for spectators and just people don't even know what we do, but these are relatively safe. And so we were able to set up races right in the middle of street fairs and community festivals where random people could walk by and see up close what we were doing, uh, what FPV racing was all about get excited about both kind of the technology and building uh, as well as just the fun sport of racing and so that was really cool i hope to do that again in the future and who knows maybe i'll race this one it's got hdmi out on the goggles so maybe we can even put that up on a big tv for people to watch that'll be pretty cool having digital fpv does make this build heavier than some of my others but i think we're still going to be able to have a lot of fun with it today i'm going to push it as hard as I can, and we'll see what it can do. But I also wanna show you how I built this drone because I'm really happy with how it turned out. I think this might be my toughest 2S Whoop that I've ever built. And you wouldn't even know that it has digital FPV by looking at it because all of the electronics are completely inside of the frame. So let's go onto the bench. I'll show you how I built this and then we'll come out here and really push it and see what this thing can do. All right, so today I am building what I like to call a Shutterbug 85. It's gonna be an 85 millimeter 2S Whoop using this frame. 2 inch props, 1103, 11,000 kV motors, and that's gonna be powered on 2S. And then of course the new thing is the Sharkbite digital FPV system. This is only my second time using Sharkbite uh, at all, and my first time trying to put it into one of these builds. So that is the new part for me. I am excited about that. But the rest of this formula is tried and true. I've built quite a few of these Shutterbug 85s. I've bashed around my backyard. I've used them for competitive racing, and I know a number of you have as well. Um, so that part ought to be good. It'll be interesting to see how they pair up and if the shark bite system gives us enough of an improvement in FPV to make up for the extra weight. I'm going to do the actual build off camera to save time, but I want to show you my plan and the components that I'm going to use because it's way easier to see everything when it's split out like this. And I want to get some of the weights as well. After I released my first shark bite video, several of you said that you'd love to see me try to build the world's lightest shark bite whoop. And that could be a very cool project, but that's not what I'm doing today. Durability and maintainability are going to be the most important requirements for this build. But of course, the reason people say that is I do like pushing the limits. Sometimes I just try to see how light a thing can possibly be. Like you might remember this 15.3 gram brushless whoop that I built, or later this 16.8 gram 75 millimeter whoop. These things are amazing, but it's a lot of work to get the weight down this much. And they're only durable by virtue of the fact that they're so light, like they just have no collision impact. Uh, but that's not what we're doing today. The shark bite system needs 2S voltage, so that's gonna need a little bit more weight. And it adds some weight itself, and the camera adds some weight. And to manage that weight, the two inch props are really gonna help us out. And when I fly something like this, it's just gotta be durable. Of course, I won't really know how durable this one is until I put it to the test, but I think it's gonna work out pretty well. I've got a customized TPU canopy that I've made for this build. I'll tell you more about that in a second. And I've worked out a way to mount the electronics so that everything except for the camera is completely below the level of the frame in the very center of the frame. And I don't think anything's gonna get broken in the center of the frame. So I think this is gonna work out pretty well. Okay, let's quickly go over some of the components and then I'll put this build together. To start with, we've got the Sharkbite video transmitter and this version of it is a single board and it's shaped like a Whoop all-in-one flight controller, which is awesome. Uh, the shape of this board is what's gonna make this particular build possible. And there are corner tabs that are actually removable. You can see I've already removed them there. So we're looking at a little above 5.5 grams. And if we put those tabs back on, it was about 5.7 grams. The VTX is gonna mount in the frame just like this where the flight controller would normally be. You can see it's got a nice low profile, but it is wider than most Whoop flight controllers and so it would hit the frame normally. To get it to sit that low, I did have to carve out some of the material on the frame to lower the rims on the sides here. 
but I think that's going to work. The only real danger is that there are a lot of tiny components near the edge of this board, and you would not want any of those components touching the inside of the rim of the frame, because then in a crash, they could get knocked sideways and break off a capacitor or something. So I was careful when I carved this out. You'll want to look from all sides and make sure there's a gap between the frame and any of those components. This is the Beta 85X frame, and there's actually two versions of this frame. The one I'm going to use happens to be from the 85X 4K, but there's only minor differences. The regular 85X frame is almost the same. The 4K one just has a few extra holes for screws, and the original one has the nub on the front so you can tell the difference. You could use either one though. They do make a carbon fiber brace that can go on the bottom to stiffen up the frame. I don't know if I'm going to use this yet. It adds weight and it requires longer screws, so I'm only going to use it if I have to, but there is a chance that this could help reduce jello in the camera, so we'll see. For the flight controller and ESCs, I'm going to try out this board. It's called the JHE MCU Play 4, and I got this from a previous build. I never ended up using it, so I'm going to try it out now. I've never tried it before, so I don't know if it's any good, but hopefully it is. There are at least two things that are attractive about this board. For one thing, it's unusually cheap. Uh, I think I paid $26 for this, and it's also unusually light, 3.15 grams, and that is if you have no wires or motor plugs. The biggest danger with this flight controller is probably going to be the possibility of burning an ESC. Uh, there are only 5 amp ESCs, and the board is only rated for 2S max, but that should be okay, at least in theory. I've used Beta FPV 2S 5 amp boards a lot in my Shutterbug 85 builds. One time we even had an outdoor race where the track was large enough to fly literally on full throttle the entire time, and it was totally fine. The biggest danger is going to be in a crash, usually, but with the frame, it's very hard to have a crash that actually stops the props. So I'm going to try this out. Hopefully it'll be okay, but maybe I'll end up eating my words. Um, unlike the Beta FPV boards, though, this one does have two RX pads and two TX pads. So that's going to let me hook up the receiver and also the VTX so I can get OSD and stuff like that. Since the VTX is going to be mounted on the top, my plan is to mount the flight controller on the bottom. If you kind of angle it in like this, USB side down, you can actually get it to fall all the way down and then mount it to the underside of the flight controller down here. The 85X 4K had an ESC board that hung down here, so it has holes that are designed for mounting on the bottom that should work perfectly. If you have the other 85X frame, it won't have the holes here. You'll have to create those holes yourself. I do not recommend drilling. I recommend just taking a tiny screw and just forcing it in and the plastic kind of spreads out, but that'll work. The only real issue is going to be accessing USB, and to solve that, you can see I carved away a little bit of the material on this battery tray down here. I only needed to carve out a little bit because I've got these USB adapters that can stick in there. You might need to carve out more or less depending on what kind of cable you have. Here's the weight of the motors with their wires and plugs. These are Emacs Avon 2-inch props. There are other props that I might try out, but these are tried and true for this formula, so that's what I'm going to start with. For the receiver, I'm going to use a Crossfire Nano, unless my Express LRS hardware shows up in time. This antenna is made by iFlight. I've never used it before, so I don't know if it's good, but it's very cheap, has a long enough wire, it fits my color scheme, and it's right-hand circular polarized. And that matters because the patch antennas that are built into the goggle receiver are also right-hand circular polarized. And for some reason, Fatshark does not even advertise this fact. I looked on the official product page and on the Fatshark Sharkbite manual, and it does not say whether these are right hand or left hand, but I've asked online and people say that they're right handed patch antennas, so that's important to know. Hopefully, that's correct. If it's not, if you know otherwise, please comment down below. The camera that I have is called the DigiSight version 2, it's by Foxeer, and in theory, any company can make a camera for the Sharkbite system. Currently, there's two companies, Runcam and Foxeer. I used the Runcam camera in my first Sharkbite build, so I figured I'd give the Foxeer camera a try this time. Now the Runcam Nano HD was 4.2 grams without any wires, and so this one is uh, significantly heavier. Um, I'm going to have to see what the weight is with these wires off. I sure hope the weight comes from these extra wires. Uh, the MIPI cable is a lot longer than on the Runcam camera, and that might make sense on a 5-inch or 7-inch build, but that's way more than I need, so I actually picked up a 55 millimeter MIPI cable. This is what I'm going to use, and that way I don't have to coil up the wire inside the canopy. And this other wire is for the remote control and for an analog camera. And this kind of baffles me. I have no idea who would buy a $50 camera just to use it for analog. There's a lot of other analog cameras out there that are great. But that's what these wires are. I'm going to be taking these wires off for sure. And finally, that brings us to the canopy that's going to sit on top and hold the camera. The canopy is a really important part for durability. If you've got a weak canopy or it's got a bad connection onto the frame, then the whole build isn't durable. 
Uh, and I want this one to be super tough, so I spent some extra time thinking about the canopy for this build. Now, of course, there's lots of canopies that you can buy or you can 3D print, and some of them are quite strong. Here's just one random example. All the canopies for whoops and toothpicks mount right on top of the flight controller like that. And that's fine in general, but they all have one main problem, which is that they mount to these posts that hold the flight controller, or in my case, they're going to hold the VTX. And the problem with that is these posts are always the weakest point on any whoop frame. It's not that the screws tear out of them, the whole post just breaks off. It happens all the time. You don't want a hit to the canopy to tear these posts out, and there is a better way. If you look closely at the 85X frame, you'll see that there's cross supports here and here with tiny holes, and those are designed to support a canopy, one kind of like this one that Beta FPV makes, and it actually mounts on like that. Uh, fun fact, these holes were actually my idea. I helped Beta FPV when they were developing the 75X. Some of my friends did as well. That build was based on a prototype that I made, and you can see that here on this channel. Uh, but the holes didn't make it into the original 75X. I think they added it later, and they're definitely here in the 85X. So when a canopy mounts on top, it means that an impact is transferred to the frame instead of that impact being transferred to the flight controller stack. And that is super important. And also, these screws are much less likely to tear out because they would have to rip the whole plastic along the length of the screw instead of just breaking off a little post. Unfortunately, there's only holes on the two sides, not in the front and back. You can see I've already put holes in there. Again, I didn't drill those. I used a screw and just kind of forced it in slowly, and that's how you can create those holes. So I made my own canopy for this purpose, and I am pretty happy with it. It started out as the Pickle Canopy by Alex Arvinte. Thank you, Alex. Although I spent quite a while customizing it for this purpose. I stretched it out in all four directions. I added a screw hole in the front, created this kind of star pattern, and it's going to go right onto the frame like that. The star kind of follows the contour of these hoops, and at each point it's going to screw into the frame. So we've got four point mounting, and none of the screws are shared with the stack in the center. That means that an impact to the canopy is not going to hit the VTX at all, it's going to hit the frame. If it rips out, it's ripping out of the frame, it's not ripping out posts that are holding the VTX. And so that's really important. I also moved the screw holes back here so that the DigiSight camera rests completely inside of this canopy. The lens does not protrude at all, which means even in a forward impact, you're going to hit the canopy first. The weight of this canopy, two and a half grams, that's pretty typical for a canopy like this. So yeah, that is coming together really nicely, which means it's time for me to stop talking and start building. And done. Here is the finished build, and I am pretty happy with how this turned out. I think it'll be pretty tough, and I think it looks pretty cool. It's got kind of a low profile. The camera is on top, but it doesn't stick up that much. You wouldn't even know that this has digital FPV by looking at it. Uh, it's also just super clean. There's no wires on top. There's no wires coming through uh, around the board in these wheel wells where they might get caught. So I think this is going to be pretty good. But what do you think? Do you have suggestions for me? Are there things that you would suggest I try differently? I'd love to hear about that. Uh, I'm learning from you guys all the time as well. So let's talk down in the comment section below. For myself, there's a few more things I could say about this build, but that can wait. Let's go fly. Like I said, we actually do race 2S whoops like this, so I figured a good way to put it to the test would be to throw up some gates and try racing right here in my front yard. Let's see what it can do.
This build is so much fun. I just love this thing. Um, I'm used to having analog video when I fly builds like this. And compared to analog video, I can tell you it is way, way better. Uh, I know you can't always tell on YouTube because of all of the compression, but in the goggles, I can see just so much more clearly with this. Is it as clear as DJI? No, uh, but it fits in this build and it's lighter and it's super low latency. Uh, just flying with it feels really good. And I've had a ton of fun with this. Okay, back on the bench. And there's just a few more quick things I wanna point out about this build before we wrap up, including the weight. We're looking at 52.8 grams about. And that's pretty heavy for an 85 millimeter 2S whoop, at least the way that I usually build them. And I can definitely feel that weight when I'm flying this one for sure, but it's still a ton of fun to fly. Regarding durability, I already showed you how this canopy mounts onto the frame instead of mounting right on top of the VTX, and that's to help protect the VTX in a crash. But there's still one possible problem, and that would be a crash that's so hard that it deforms the canopy and causes this camera to smash down onto the VTX. I was afraid that could happen, and it might break off some components on the VTX. So what I did, I don't know if you can see it in there, but I actually put some dense foam between the camera and the VTX. So that foam will absorb that impact and dissipate it. And I did the same thing with this capacitor that is on top. The capacitor is actually resting on a little cradle of foam so that it can't smash into the VTX. All right, enough talk about durability. The proof is in the pudding, and I know a lot of you like to see the crashes, so check this out. <laughs> After dozens of hard crashes, I'm happy to report that there is absolutely no damage to this drone. Uh, you know, unless you count a little bit of grass stains on the inside or that camera that got bumped out of focus. That was the only crash that required me to fix anything at all before I could continue flying. And it's pretty simple. You just twist the lens until it's sharp again and then twist the locking ring into place. And so, yeah. The frame is totally fine, the props are fine, the electronics are fine, the glass is unscratched. There is nothing wrong with this drone. Since durability was kind of the goal of this build, I would say that's mission accomplished. This might actually be the most durable Whoop that I've ever built. These props are Emacs Avon 2-inch props, and I do like these props. They work really well in the 85mm frame, but there are some newer props available from HQ and from Gemfan that would fit this, both 3-blade and 4-blade. I want to try out some of those options later, but I know these props are good, so that's why I'm starting with these. The main downside of this prop is that it has a pretty large opening on the shaft, and that means that it can be loose on the shaft. Uh, it might just slip or it might come off in a crash, and these particular motors don't even have holes for uh, screws. It has to be press fit. So you may see the little bit of white stuff in here. That is actually dental floss. That's how I add a little bit of extra friction. I kid you not. And I made a video about how to do this. I'll put a link to that down in the video description. And the last thing I want to point out is this Crossfire Nano Receiver 
which is tucked in right there. So it's under the flight controller, it's inside of the frame, and that's where it would normally go on this frame, but you wouldn't normally have a flight controller on the bottom. So I was concerned about it getting pinched in there and then carrying vibration from the frame directly into the flight controller. And the flight controller, of course, is supposed to be soft mounted, so that would defeat the purpose. And the thickest part of the nano receiver is actually right here where the UFL connector is. So what I've done is I kind of shifted it off to the side so that the thickest part could stick out over here. The thin part has plenty of room to go on the inside. And I've just got some Kapton tape on it and a little bit of foam so that if the receiver does vibrate, it won't vibrate the flight controller. And the antenna just runs back here and is taped onto the back arms just like that. I hope you've enjoyed this video. I've certainly enjoyed making it and I'm really happy with this build. If you think you might wanna build something similar, I will put the parts down in the video description and the STL files and that kind of stuff, uh, but they're not affiliate links. If you wanna buy stuff, just go find whatever FPV retailer you wanna support and that's cool with me. And if you wanna see more of my projects, of course you can like and subscribe and we'll see you later.